Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Hitman Absolution with me, Grey Hunter, where we've just escaped and we're on the train. There we go. You're right. The arms dealer is after Victoria. I need to stop him before he gets too close. Man, he already too close. Damn right. You want my advice? You take that girl and you run. I never did believe in running. No, that's not something Mr. 47 does, is it? I like how the subtitle for two days earlier was two According days earlier, sources, as if it were a spoken line. in Chicago. Me and the boys are leaving ASAP. I need you along to spearhead the operation. Are you in? Wade. I heard you. You want me to snatch some chick? Name's Victoria. Dom is gonna call you, tell you how to find her. She's in hiding somewhere. You got that? That's a lot of hassle for one chick. She must be special. I need to bring my boys. That means double my fee. Mm. Take Lenny with you. He can bring her back when you find her. Lenny, limp dick? Trip on my fee. <laughs> Sorry, the kid's a dipshit. 25. Nice that he's held in such high regard. 26. 37. 30. 35. Deal. <laughs> Lenny, come give the man a line. Hello, Lenny. We'll be seeing more of Lenny later. Come on, Limp Dick. <laughs> Limp Dick Lenny. <laughs> Shut up, Wade! <laughs> I like good old Wade, I really do. Of course you do. Oh, bitch makes my skin crawl. Oh, that's probably why I like him. Blake Dex is a little bit strange. Now, Blake Dex is a ruthless son of a bitch for sure, but the guy you really need to worry about is his business partner, Tom Osman, owner of the Vixen Club over on Bristol Street. This prick is bad new homes, even by my standards. I mean, he's clever and really connected, and it's only a matter of time before he tracks down your girl at the orphanage. How do you know about that? Hey, Chicago knows, I know. <laughs> Tom ain't all that different. Send me his picture. So grim. So yeah, Dom Osmond is basically Blake Dexter's information broker, like Birdie is ours. And so we must kill him. Cop in Chicago is hot on your ass. The safest route to the Vixen Club should be through the tunnels next to the Roxy. Good luck, Holmes. Thanks, Birdie. So now we get to go in the tunnels. Hello, homeless man. So we need this bottle here, because we're going to need it for a distraction in a moment. And you want to hurry up and get past this area, because there are cops looking around in this next section. We almost got spotted there. So then you just camp out here and wait for this fellow to turn around. There he goes. And you follow him. For some reason, even though he's looking mostly in your direction, the detection cone doesn't actually see you, so you can just go straight on past him. But you do have to wait here, because the second cop goes and turns into the room next to us, and he has a look to see what his partner found. And then make your way up here. Now you do want to get behind this cop car really quickly, because you need to set off a patrol chain, so the fellow who's walking across from right to left on our screen, he is important. And so is that guy who's uh, flicking the torch around on, over on the right. Now this fellow on, who is walking towards us on our left, he's the most crucial one. Because we had to avoid him. So we waited for Torchman to turn around, this guy to walk past, and off we go. Now that fellow, if he wasn't in that position right there, wouldn't let you get the evidence, which is here. Thank you kindly. Go to the next cop car and get behind this pillar. So this pillar actually protects you from his vision. He's looking sort of at us, but he can't really see us. And now you need to toss this bottle over there to get him to look the other way. Because this fellow, we must follow. So we wait for him to turn around, and over we go. And then just roll from cover to cover between these pillars. It's kind of simple. Fairly easy. If you throw that bottle too early though, the guy who is looking at the wall will come and see you, because uh, you'll be trying to move in behind the guy who is patrolling down this way, and you won't make it. That's what that's what mucked up my runs of this the most, I think. That he would turn around, and then he'd see me, and you'd go, fuck. So grab that bottle there, 
and just ledge this thing. This is a really nice level. I like this uh, level's design. It sort of it makes you feel like you're going a long way. I suppose you sort of are, but not really. So the evidence is in here. Grab the evidence and grab the key card, and then swap your revolver for this silence pistol. You don't need the silence pistol, but I like to have it, and it helped me out a lot when we came to a later bit of this mission. So off we go. Now remember, when you get inside the Vixen Club, look toward the bar, because Dom, he likes to be where the action is. And open that door. So Dom Osmond is the guy in the suspenders. He's off to our right. And now we must eliminate him. Now there are a few ways you can do this, but the easiest one I've found is this. Because it relies on the least amount of waiting, and it's the most stealthy. So head into this private area back here, don't worry about the stripper, or whatever she is, polka, stripper, we'll call her a stripper, we'll be nice. And then open the door and get in here, that's why you needed the key card. Because what we're going to do is we're going to stand on this side of the two-way mirror, and Dom Osmond is going to come in for a lap dance. Hey, So what we're doing now is we're waiting for Osman to come in here with his stripper. The red light goes on, that means he's about to come in. There he is. And there's a patrolling guard outside. We don't have to worry about him, it's all good. So she comes in, gives him a bit of a dance. Apparently he likes some Alabama wildflower she does. God knows what that is. But if you're not in here, uh, when he kicks her out, he gets a phone call. If you're not in here, he doesn't get that phone call. So you want to be in here before he actually gets into the uh, the booth. And he should. There you go. Now he's getting his phone call. So you want to wait for her to be outside, because although the pistol is silenced, she will see it if she's not on the other side of that curtain. There you go. And did you prep the Hawaii room? Blam! Alright, Dom Osmond eliminated. For some reason, they do not hear the, gr the glass breaking. I can understand them not hearing the gunshot, but the glass breaking should have been a bit of a clue. So we get rid of Dom. In he goes. And away we go. Make sure that you've put the pistol away. I got caught more than once because I forgot to. So we head up here. This is why we need the bottle. We could have picked up any bottle, but that one's just conveniently located. So... Just walk on past this guy and get in here. I like to just perch myself here because that door doesn't always shut quick enough and you want to make sure that the guard you're distracting is the guard over there. Because he's the one who's looking at the stairs. There we go. And off we go. And then pick the lock. Fairly easy. Just a little bit complicated there at the end. Alrighty. So now in this section, I don't know what I was doing, but I only just realized in time that I was walking like, completely straight up and not sneaking at all. I have no idea what I was doing there. Luckily we saved it. So those two are going to have a conversation. They've just about finished and they're going to split up. The black guy, we just want to wait for him to get past there. And now we go. Because we're going to have to roll across this area. And again. And now we're in the uh, the dressing room. So what we want to do is throw that bottle just over there. Done deal. And the guard who was talking to the black guy will turn around from coming up the stairs and go investigate. And now it's the time to make our move. Because if you let him get upstairs, it becomes infinitely more difficult to uh, move into the office and get the info you need, so try to distract him. Now there's another there's another guard who's going to just walk over there, yep. So walk on through, and there you go. And that's the end of this section. It's a very small section, but it's very complicated. At least if you don't know their patterns. If he really is working with the hitman, we need his wings clipped now. Call me back when you got a lock on that girl. Dexter smells a fortune. I intend to get my fair share. I'll see you soon, old boy. So it seems like they know about Victoria. But do they know where she is? Spoilers. They do. Well, not yet. 
but they will. You were right. Dom was searching for Victoria. I got to him just in time. Good for you, Holmes. Kudos. Thanks, Birdie. He was on to you as well. A man is coming. A man named Wade. Although the subtitle says a man named Wade. Rat. You need to get your ass over here right away, because this is about to get very loud and very messy. I have to call you back. Now if you were crouching when you entered this section, Hitman will do a creepy little descent thing. When he tells Birdie he has to hang up, he'll just dip down off the screen. Alright, so we want to move on through this way. There is a pair of policemen in the way, like directly in the way, but we can avoid them easily enough. So, hustle up against this pillar and wait for this guy to come through. Hello there, Mr. Ignorant Policeman. And off we go. There are a few hiding spots, but really this segment is very, very simple. Like, you don't really need to hide ever. So we just wait for Mr. Shotgun to decide that, no, there's not really anything around and he'll turn around and go away. Come on, fuck off. Go away. There we go. And now we go. There we are, and ledge. Good job, 47. So there's a dead stripper up here. I'm not sure if they're the person that, uh, if she's the one that they're looking for, but they were talking about a dead stripper earlier, and if this isn't the one they were talking about, we're doing a public service. There you go. Now you know. New case, guys. So that will distract the cops who are standing where that last one is now, off to our left. There's a group of five of them there, you need to distract them somehow. Because the evidence is right below our feet. Now we're not going to go even though that last cop has left, because the guy with the shotgun walked from left to right and he hasn't come back yet. So we're just going to wait. Come on shotgun man. <laughs> you could see me looking for him, making sure I didn't accidentally miss him. Nope, there he is. So he'll go on past, and now we can drop. And grab the evidence, and get. And now, what we're going to do is grab this bottle, and we're going to hide in this little storage cupboardy thing. And the reason we're going to do that is because there's two policemen coming towards us. One from the left, one from the right. The one from the left is coming now. Should be able to hear the crackling in a second. There we go. Okay, so he's going to turn and look underneath the stairs for stuff, I don't know. But the reason you can still hear a little bit of crackling was that the cop with the shotgun was coming this way too. So we just had to wait for them to turn around, and away we go. I probably could have gone a little bit earlier, but I got caught by that guy so many times. The guy with the shotgun, that is, when I was trying to practice run this, so I decided to just avoid it. Now there is a cut here, because... At the Birdie. end of this level, I'm on my I will point it out. Chinatown. Stay low and watch your back. Oh yeah, well that's easy for you to say, Holmes. Man, that Wade, they say he got ways to make you talk. And you and I both know that I got a lot of shit to say, so hurry. Just stay calm. Calm the fuck down, Birdie. So there's a cut, I think it's here. Yes, it's right there. And the reason it's there is because we got caught near the end of this level by a guy who decided that no, he wasn't really interested in the bottle that I had thrown. Even though I threw it right next to him. He was just like, nah. No, nah, not having it. So we just gotta wait for that policeman over there on the roof to turn. Decide that he's not really interested in what's over this way. He can actually see you if you climb down from this area. Because he's got eagle eye. He's a fucking assassin. And that guy turn around, and away we go. So we just get across this plank, conveniently placed, and head on over this way to the ledge. Now that chef, he'll go away. There he is, he left now. And all we have to do is get through here before the cop sees us, and head on down this way. You can hide and go in through the roof, but this is just as effective, as long as you hide in the right spot. How long have you been waiting to do that one, huh? That came to me last night. I and away we go. Write it down so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> Seriously? Have you have a license? That was, uh, so now we just need to wait here for a minute. 
Because there's a cop talking to one of the shop assistants, but there's also this guy who patrols around, and he is a pain in the ass. Because he's very, very quick. His patrol pattern is very short. I was hoping that I could make it through now, but no. Listen, if you see a man fit in that description, you let one of us know, right? You understand? Mainly because those two hadn't finished their conversation. So I could have gone, but eh, it's a bit risky. And I got this far, and I was like, nah, nah, I'm not restarting this again. Because this is actually the hardest bit. Getting to this part of the uh, level in this section is the hardest bit of this particular sub-level. So... All we need to do now is turn this wheel, there we are, and that opens the gas vents, I think, or it opens the vents, I can't remember exactly what it is. Either way, you'll start to notice that the air is thickening a bit. Now we just gotta wait for this guy to go again. Come on, go away. You don't really want to be here, go, get, there we go. And through we go. And then we ignite fireworks. There is a chef guy who comes in through here, and we were very lucky not to get seen. But just hide there until he decides that he's gonna run. I tried to make it back across, but it didn't really work out. But you can just hide against this ledge, or this corner of the wall. The cop will ignore you, and the chef will run because it's all smoky and he'll start coughing, etc. It's okay though, because as long as you don't progress to the next section, you don't begin their patrol script thingy. So you'll be okay. And then just hug this wall. I opened the door because the door is a very, very good timer. If you open it as soon as you uh, nudge up against the wall, it will match the patrol patterns of this guy exactly. So when the door shuts the first time, you can open it and go, because he'll turn. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. There we go. So the door shut. Just open the door. Keep going. He's walking the other way. He won't notice you. Now you do need to get over to this area fairly quickly because two cops come in through that door and occasionally I have a problem where I couldn't scale cover here. It just wouldn't let me. You need to be quick to get the evidence and get back out before they turn around. Now remember to stay crouched here because that chef will see you. And that cop right there is the dickhead who decided that no, he wasn't going to be distracted by my bottle. And made me do this all again. This is your fault. So he's turned. We can head off. I'm still going to throw the bottle. Mainly because I'm hoping it'll work this time. And it does, because obviously you were seen it. And he turns like he's meant to. And then we head through here. Now this section, I messed this up a little bit. I really did. I made it overly complicated, but I made it through and it was so ridiculously unlikely that I figured I was going to keep it. So I threw these two bottles to get people distracted, and this third one to distract the last guard who was looking my way. There we go. He wasn't actually looking my way at that point, but he turns around very quickly, so we had to head in here, and I wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to be turning around to look at me. So I try throwing this bottle over there to get that guard's attention. And for some reason, it gets the other guard's attention as well. So he's being very uncooperative here. He's not meant to turn around, he's meant to keep looking the other way. So this is where the silence pistol also comes in handy, because I could not have done that with the revolver. I really should have scrapped this recording of this little subsection right here, but you know what? I figured I'd give it a go. See if I could come up with something ridiculous that actually worked, and surprise of all surprises, I did. So, I'm going to fire a couple more distraction shots, but I don't want to shoot him when this guy's looking towards me, the fat cop, right in front of us. So, head back over this way. I believe at this point I decide to get the evidence. No, nope, more distraction shots. So, I'm getting them all worked up. But that's okay, because as long as they're all worked up, they won't be looking my way. Well, hopefully they won't look my way. And I managed to get through and hide behind these boxes. That should not have worked. That should not have worked in a million years. And yet, it did. This game. Sometimes this game. So now we just have to wait here, unfortunately, because uh, the one problem with distraction shots is that it 
gets them all out of their patterns, and then once they finish being distracted, they go back to their patterns. So, you have to wait. Because that fellow there with the revolver who's standing right in front of the doorway, he can turn around at any second. Luckily he didn't, but he could have. That's the point here. So reload, because really there wasn't anything else to do, and we wait for Shotgun Man to come back over here, decide everything is all well. Now I could go now, but I choose not to, because again, patrolling guard, so you'll see him in a second. There he is, you can see his torch already. He actually comes into this room. He comes in and he has a little bit of a look around. So come on, hurry up, do it. There we go. So he comes in, he has a little bit of a look around. If I tried to pick the lock when he was walking back towards us, he would have seen me when I was about halfway through it when he did this pattern. But now we're safe because he'll go and stand over by the uh, little mini wall thing again, have a little bit of a look around, and then he'll come back. But that is enough time for us to get out of there. Okay, we're almost to you, buddy. We're almost to you. Just chill, oh, man. Shit, they're here. Three weights, guys, in the crowd asking questions. Ooh, it's only a matter of time before they see me. You gotta get me out of here, Holmes. You got to. You got to for your own damn good. Calm down, bro. Birdie, focus. Don't do anything foolish. I will take care of this. This is kind of what I do. So there's another cut here, because when I was recording, I realized I hadn't actually done uh, one of the things that I wanted to do, which was show off the katana. And so uh, I had to redo the run, because the run that I recorded first was the one with the katana, and then I was like, oh yeah. I kind of wanted to show off the other things too, but I didn't want to restart the checkpoint. Anyway, decided to just go on through, barrel on through. So what we're doing when we turn here, so we're going to turn and face the wall. What we're doing there is avoiding the policeman who's standing over in that other area. You'll remember this because this is Chinatown again. There was a dumpster there and we could get a brick. Now there's apparently a place for the people to stand there. And a lazy as fuck sushi chef who just, you know, has breaks all the time because that's how he rolls. There's one of our targets. And that is the reason we are here. So we climb on through, the cop won't see us, and the sushi chef doesn't actually question our presence for some unknown reason. So we'll just wait. You can use that gas pump and uh, blow him sky high with fireworks, but you can just as easily do this. Down you go, son. Down you go. Frank Owens is eliminated. We'll hide him in the dumpster. Luckily, the uh, sushi chef doesn't actually turn around far enough that he can see you doing that. Otherwise, you'd have a bit of an issue. But you just sneak on out, and you're free. Now, you do just have to keep remembering that that cop can see you. So keep turning slightly away from him, because it resets his detection meter. There's another of our targets. You would have seen him off to the right in red. We will ignore him because he's not the one that we're currently going after. Well, he is, but he's not the person we're going to take out right this second. He's not where he needs to be. So just remember to watch out for cops and sneak on down this area. Now you do have to stay kind of in the crowd because the third target will come around that corner off to our right, directly in front of us right now. So you do have to be watching for him because if he if you stay in this point, there he is. If you stay too close to the middle, they will see you, one or the other will. But as soon as he's passed, you can continue on. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here, and this is the area where you could have taken out the King of Chinatown's drug guy and uh, stolen his costume. But this vent wasn't there in the previous uh, mission. So we go on through it. And what we're going to do here, we aren't going to touch anybody at all, we're just going to steal Birdie's file. When we do that, the guy who comes to get Birdie's file and that cop, they have a gunfight. So the cop will kill the uh, Wade's guy for you, essentially. You don't have to worry about it. So then you just hop back out and away we go to get guy number three. So again, we just have to watch out for the cop over here. Can't see him right this second. 
It might be outside in the actual central plaza. But you just wander off and through this way. And just head straight on through here. Now, last time this was where the king of Chinatown parked his car. Obviously his car's not here. That's all good. So what we do is we get up here and I believe I put in... Yes, I did. I put in how to get the katana. So we threw that bottle to distract that sushi chef. And the katana, of all things, the katana is right next to his little store. So to pick it up and put it away because the, uh, the guy that Wade sent is standing right behind you. And then we can kill all these guys with this katana. Hello, Frank. Goodbye, Frank. Hey, what you're doing? Now, if you want to use the katana for this guy, you have to subdue this cop first, otherwise he will see you. So, subdue the cop through the katana, as you can see. And then you hide the body. And then I use the katana again as a distraction object. So he's here, he's going, hang on, where's my cop buddy? Oh no, I didn't use it as a distraction object in this run. And... stab. Hello there, Bill. And you can do this, this is amazing. But if you do it, you lose the katana. Obviously, because it goes falling. Bye, Larry. And also, in that uh, lock-up area, you can get the explosives. Like in Blood Money, people don't care if you throw explosives. So, you can do this amusing thing. Hello? Hey, Frank. Frank, Frank, boom. Oh yes, poor Frank. So again, if you didn't have a silenced pistol before now, you could take one from one of Wade's guys, but we already had one, so all we have to do is wait for the sushi chef to be knocked down, because if he sees you, you cannot get a silenced assassin on this. And then, boom. Bye Larry. Bye. So down we go, and then we just want to hide his body because it is sitting right there and the cop will potentially see it. So we'll just roll him in there. Bye Larry. Now the evidence is strangely right here. I don't know why the evidence is there and not at like the same place it was in the central plaza, but whatever. So now we have the evidence and away we go. We can just walk out of here now. As long as you don't let the cops see you, you are golden. Nobody else suspects your presence. And you haven't gone anywhere near the sushi chef, so you don't have to worry about being caught trespassing. You're not wearing a sushi chef costume, so they won't care about you. Just ignore them. So we just waited here because that cop is looking in our direction. He'll turn around in a minute. He did pass a little bit closer, and I wasn't sure if he was going to if he was going to actually wander into the crowd. So I did decide to move a little bit more off to the left, but it was over. Okay. Now you just have to run the gauntlet of that cop again, but it's not too hard. You can also poison the sushi at the stand closest to where that cop is standing, but I never found a way to do it because if you do it in any costume other than the sushi chef, people get suspicious. But if you do it in the sushi chef costume the chef gets suspicious i don't know how you do it but whatever hello you again so there's birdie's boss but birdie's guard isn't there anymore so presumably neither is birdie hey chill chill bro chill birdie where is he you owe me a coffee asshole. i was trying to be nice here have 20 bucks Thank you. Now, where are they? He left with this cowboy guy. Real nasty looking piece of work. They were going downtown, I think. Thank you. Bye. Alright, so we'll take Birdie's bus. We need to get to the orphanage. Too late, 47. I gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> Tell me, Come Mr. on, buddy. Wade, really? What would you rather do? Find a girl? Or waste a bullet? Clock is ticking. So you can sort of understand Birdie's decision there. It's not really his fight, and he, he is a broker of information. He gives information to people. That's kind of his thing. So fair enough. 
So we got an overall rating of Shadow in this. You cannot actually get Silent Assassin for the whole level if you don't kill somebody in every section. So we only had two sections where we actually killed somebody. Therefore, we couldn't get uh, Silent Assassin for the whole thing, but we still did pretty damn well. I was just checking over this to make sure we didn't get spotted, and also because that last section was a rerun, so I just wanted to show you the guys that I did actually do the whole thing, I just didn't record the most of the other ones. Because we'd already done uh, the whole thing.